proper care for your deer after the harvest is the most important part of hunting. For many, this is a very unpleasant task, but it does have to be dealt with. Even for the most seasoned outdoorsman, this puts a lump in the back of your throat that makes you swallow hard. I have tried to do this little video with as much taste and class as I possibly could and hopefully I've shown the respect and love that I have for these beautiful animals. So with that said, I hope that you can get something out of this video and it might help you in some way and let's get to it. The first thing I do after filling out my tag and taking pictures is I make a V or a Y incision right at the back of the head coming from the base of each antler. I follow the black stripe right down the middle of the back and get well behind the back shoulder and make sure you go plenty far back. Then go cut around the front leg all the way around it and then up the back of the leg and right out through what I call the armpit like that. I hope that gives you enough detail. Then I just start caping it forward towards the head. In this case, to keep the meat from getting dirty, it was really dusty. We took the meat off as we skinned. Get that meat right into the game bag to protect it from dirt and flies and heat and needs all the protection it can get. I like to take the meat off in muscle groups and that's fairly easy to see when you get the deer skinned off and I like to take it off in as big a pieces as I possibly can. It seems like there's less waste that way. Here you can see the back straps cut along the backbone and then along the top of the ribs and you'll just take off a nice long strip of back strap stakes this is just a quick example of how I cut up the back straps. Um, I just slice them into pieces and then take my knife and cut them off the, that thick skin. Most states require evidence of sex, so make sure that you leave the testicles attached to a piece of meat. Anytime you remove the head from the rest of the carcass, you better have some evidence of sex on there. This is just to show you how I break down the quarters and the pieces you can kind of expect to get out of them and how I put them in different bags. This really helps for cooling and also to keep your meat organized for when you get ready to cut it up. An example of leaving the evidence of sex here on this antelope, notice I left the testicles in case we need to cut it up and put it in the coolers if it gets too warm. And this bone out method is like the gutless method, but I, I like to take the guts out of there so I can get to the tenderloin. It's just easier not to mess around with the, with the insides. Besides, it only takes about three minutes to gut a deer. Here are some of the tools I use. I like to use razor blades for my skinning and caping. Um, the knife, when I start taking the meat off the bone, uh, of course the saw to remove the head and the horns. You may need to cape your deer out if the weather's too warm and you're going to be up there for a few days. So here's a few pointers that might help you to get your deer caped out. A screwdriver helps you pry the skin away from the horns. And then the ear butt, just take it off close to the head as you can. In the eye, I like to stick my finger through the front of the eye and then kind of pull it inside out and you can see everything that you're doing so you don't cut the eyelid. You can see here you want to make sure you can see everything well and you see my fingers poking through right there. Careful not to cut your finger. And then make sure you go deep into the tear duct. Don't cut the tear duct off. Look at it from the front and then you can either pry it out with the screwdriver or your knife. Dig it out of the 
the deep little tear duct pocket. As far as the lip goes, skin forward and then come back. You kind of see how I did that. And then the nose, it, you'll just have to cut that cartilage off the front. This is really quite easy and you don't have to be afraid to do it. Um, then if it's really warm you'll want to turn the ears. Um, this is just pretty self-explanatory. Just turn the ear inside out. Um, you can see on the one side I've taken all the meat off of the ear butt and the one I'm working on still has all the meat there at the base of the ear. But just slowly work that ear right inside out um, and then you'll have to split the lips. Um, that's just where the skin is together around the lip and take a knife or razor blade and slice it apart. And with that nose cartilage that's left, just slowly and carefully remove it, then remove all the flesh that you possibly can. After caping, you can roll your cape up flesh side in and put it in a game bag and it'll keep much better for a couple days than it would if you hadn't caped it. But you'll still need to get it to a freezer or taxidermist or get it salted or something within a couple of days because it won't keep forever. This is just some of the saws that I use up there in the high country. And I show them because if you want to cut the antlers off, um, I cut down through the middle of the eye and then from the back of the head about three quarters down the eye. And if you're going to do a European mount, you're not going to want to cut the antlers off. So be pretty sure what you're doing before you cut. Here's some of the game bags I use. I buy tons of the cheese cloth breathable type. I have all different kinds of that. And also the other heavier bags that you put everything in. I've tried about everything. I really like this one. This little white one here works good. This is my backpack loaded up. I just thought I'd show you that. Um, I think this is about 120 pounds right here. This was a pretty big old deer, plus I got some gear in there. But And, and I like my backpack to have a frame on it, so when you sit down it takes some of the weight off. Hey, thanks for watching.